everyone. Uh, this is Shibli Atros from the Levine Cancer Institute, Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I wanted to uh, discuss with you the uh, recent uh, uh, abstract that was presented at the International Myeloma Society 2024 in Brazil. Uh, this abstract is about real-world treatment uh, patterns and survival outcomes for patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma treated with selenexor containing triplet-based uh, regimen. This is a, uh, a large study uh, that looked at uh, patients from flat iron database um, looked at those patients uh, with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma who received uh, uh, treatment with selenexor-based uh, triplet. Uh, selenexor is an XPO1 inhibitor, and it's approved for treatment uh, of, tri uh, of, of patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma, triplet-stastic exposed patients. The study uh, analyzed real-world uh, uh, treatment patterns for those patients. They looked at um, uh, electronic health uh, record-derived uh, data from the flat iron database. Uh, this is a de-identified uh, database. And they uh, uh, looked at the uh, um, patients who had been uh, uh, diagnosed with multiple myeloma between January 2011 until January uh, 31, 2024. So it's it's a large uh, uh, period of uh, uh, time that's covered, and it's uh, uh, recent, uh, including patients uh, up to 2024. So it's reflective of our current uh, uh, practice patterns. Uh, patients with uh, triplets. Uh, who received triplets based uh, selenexor were uh, mostly, largely, four, four different uh, regimens. Uh, selenexor with pomalitumide, selenexor with deratumumab, selenexor with carfilzomib, and selenexor with portizumib. Of course, all regimens included dexamethasone. Um, descriptive analysis was done on this uh, cohort, and uh, considering the start of the treatment with selenexor triplet is the index uh, therapy. Uh, uh, time to event analysis was performed on those uh, 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 results. So the um, age cutoff for the patients as expected is 69 uh, years. And the index line of therapy, as one would expect, it's mostly more than five prior lines of therapy. About a quarter of the patients received three to four lines of treatments, but the majority were more than five lines of treatment. Time till two diagnosis was uh, 58 uh, months, a median. Uh, and ECOG scores were mostly uh, ECOG score zero and one. However, it's important to note that about 13% of the patients we did not have uh, ECOG scoring for them. Uh, and regarding the ISS staging system, it was equally distributed as reflected with our uh, own practice. High risk cytogenetics were reported in about a third of the patients. It's important to note that another third of the patients did not have um, cytogenetics data at that time. Prior exposure to uh, treatments. This is important. After five prior lines of treatment, so uh, almost everyone is exposed to uh, linalidomide as expected, and uh, I would say 95% were exposed to uh, deratumumab. Similarly, bortezomib, 96% of patients exposed to bortezomib. We don't have refractoriness to those agents, but we have the prior exposure data. That's what we had, would have expected in real-world studies, uh, as most common regimens are teratumumab, linalidomide, revlumid, uh, and, and bortezomib with the dexamethasone uh, combinations. You see here, most of the patients got exposed to um, there are reflamid and lenalidomide. Uh, interestingly, the exposure to carfilzomib and pomalidomide was also very high. Uh, carfilzomib 77% of the patients and pomalidomide is 83% of the patients. Um, you would expect a lot of uh, refractoriness in this uh, cohort of patients, even though the refractory data was not available uh, in the flat iron database. So uh, in terms of the uh, selenexor triplet that was used, the most common uh, regimen used was the combination of selenexor, portezomib, and dexamethasone. Uh, this was followed by selenexor, carfilzomib, and dexamethasone. 
and then some extra pomalidomide and dexamethasone and lastly some extra geratomumab and dexamethasone. Um, I have to say, using Piratoma, but uh, Nexor has been my favorite um, uh, triplet, but in this study it was least used. And uh, that's mostly due to uh, prior exposure. Uh, so, um, dose reductions, we, we know that from uh, you know, prior studies that reducing the dose of Nexor to improve side effect profile. It did not affect the efficacy uh, by much. And dose reductions has been a very successful uh, strategy to manage patients who are getting treatment with uh, nexor based triplets. So we have here the um, dose reduction uh, data that was reported in 77 patients. We have uh, about 24 patients received dosing with 100 uh, milligrams uh, weekly, which is the largest cohort. Uh, another 22 patients received uh, 80 milligrams, and 60 milligrams was used in 27 milligrams of patients. Um, notably, uh, lower doses were used with palmalidomide, and that's something um, I would agree on in our practice. I think uh, uh, to avoid uh, uh, severe hematological uh, toxicity and uh, improved tolerance, um, it seems like uh, dose reductions with palmalidomide are very important. Uh, and I see that most patients received the 100 milligrams where uh, the patients who were uh, using Silnexor in combination with bortezomib uh, and dexamethasone. Uh, regarding over, uh, and, and uh, you know, regarding the, the why, what treatment the patient received prior to Silnexor and what patient received after Silnexor. So this is an important piece of information to see what Silnexor used for bridging with uh, for other treatments, uh, which is a common practice. Silnexor is known to uh, potentiate the uh, activity of the T cells, so one would expect, you know, Silnexor based bridging therapy is uh, very convenient to patients to uh, hopefully, at least on paper, improve the T cell function and, and maybe improve the outcomes of uh, T cell based uh, therapies. And we see we have quite a few patients who went to uh, uh, chimeric treatments, uh, uh, chimeric uh, antigen receptor treatments with CAR T. And uh, another uh, subset of patients received by specific uh, antibody-based therapy. Um, so we see here about 5% uh, of the patients proceeded with chimeric uh, antigen receptor therapy and about 11% with my specific. So it seems like the most patients uh, moved on after uh, Selenexor to receive um, uh, by specific uh, treatment. Uh, interestingly, a uh, uh, large sum of patients, around 11% as well, moved on to receive a different Cyanexor based uh, therapy. So, uh, after receiving the, the index treatment with uh, triplet Cyanexor, it seems that the uh, combination has changed uh, to improve uh, tolerability. Um, so uh, the rest of the uh, uh, data that was presented is pretty impressive. Um, we see here that um, the overall survival reported in this uh, study, we're talking about 14.7 months, that's more than uh, uh, one year. And that compares very favorably to previously uh, published data in this cohort of patients. Also for patients who are uh, 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 triple refractory, the uh, triple exposed, we don't have the refractory data. The uh, overall survival was 14.4 months. Um, that give us a, a good insight about uh, the importance of um, uh, uh, using, uh, you know, all the approved drugs that we have in hand to help improve our patients' uh, outcomes. Specifically, in this case, the Selenexor, uh, seems to reactivate or repotentiate the activity of uh, uh, previously uh, uh, used uh, antimyeloma treatments for patients who uh, uh, have relapsed refractory uh, myeloma. And it seems to be uh, uh, used successfully to bridge to uh, another uh, treatment options uh, for patients who are uh, slated to get the uh, bispecific uh, uh, treatments. Um, 
regarding the uh, uh, limitation of this study, obviously it's limited by the uh, use of uh, uh, flat iron database, which is, you know, more, we don't have uh, more detailed uh, patients, uh, 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 treatments or patients outcomes uh, uh, based on the uh, type of data that is collected. Uh, so, for example, here, missing refractor. This refractorness to each uh, agent is very important, even though one would expect most patients have been, uh, you know, refractory to prior exposed uh, treatments. It would have been nice to get the actual um, uh, refractoriness data. However, most patients have been exposed to DERA and, and uh, bortezomib, so that's that's pretty much speaks for the efficacy of Ceramexor. Um, the group of patients that analyzed in the study is very heterogeneous. So we have four different uh, regimen that were used, and each one has, uh, you know, uh, about, you know, less than 15 patients uh, uh, in each one of them. So it's, it's kind of difficult to, with, to uh, uh, withdraw conclusions from each one of those regimens. It's, it's kind of uh, uh, putting all patients in, in one bucket and uh, comparing the results of the efficacy of Sterinex or uh, across all different regimens. Um, and, and that the same point makes it difficult to uh, withdraw conclusions regarding the response after each regimen and comparing each regimen uh, against the others. As we mentioned before, uh, the insight from the data, uh, uh, the data from dose reductions is very uh, helpful, especially that, um, you know, uh, highlighting the uh, dose reduction uh, strategy to manage side effects from Selenexor is a very important point, actually. Um, the data also used overall survival did not report progression-free survival, and that's uh, an important piece of information, I have to say, because we were using, we were judging a regimen that uh, would have been nice to see how long patients, um, uh, uh, you know, stayed in remission and without uh, uh, having any uh, uh, survival issues with this treatment, uh, but I, I believe the, it's very difficult to obtain such data from uh, this type of studies. Also, the other missing point is the duration of therapy that the patients received on certain mixer before they use it as uh, a bridge for other uh, therapies. Regardless, um, we have 11% of the patients received a different triplet of uh, Cerenexor, means Cerenexor continued on those patients, and uh, we have about 11% of the patients proceeded with the bispecific antibodies. I would imagine that um, Semexor would have potentiate the T-cell function and about 5% proceeded with the CAR-T therapy. So that's, that speaks for itself. And um, uh, one year or more than a year uh, of overall survival uh, speaks favorably of utilizing uh, uh, Selenex for patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma when compared to uh, other uh, real-world studies in this cohort of patients. Thank you so much for joining us today.